Tarzan of the Apes, brought to you from out the pages of Edgar Rice Burroughs' dramatic book. Tarzan watches the column of flame lick smoke curling upward. The hut, his hut, he thinks to himself. For a moment he's torn between two desires, whether to go at once to the hut or to return, and he stops. He has no words with which to tell Jane what he wishes to do. Go to the hut he must. It is his. Next to Jane Porter, he values it above all else. It was there that he learned that he was a man and not an ape. There, too, is the little book he cannot read, Lord Greystoke's diary. Tarzan does not know it, but that diary is the only thing which can prove him to be the true heir to the Greystoke title to the States. Tarzan looks down from the treetops, down to where Jane Porter is hidden by the dense screens of tropic green. Limb to limb, branch to branch, he flashes downward. He thrusts aside the matted verdure and stands before Jane. What is it? What is it? What is it, Whiteskin? Tarzan looks at her. He understands only the last words. What was it Jane had said when she wanted to start off in the direction of Mongers? Go. Go. That was it. He points toward the steadily rising shaft of smoke. Whiteskin, go. Whiteskin, go. Never before had Tarzan so wished that he could express his thoughts. Furiously, his mind gropes for something, anything that will indicate to Jane that he will return. Jane senses his excitement, feels the chill fingers of fear grip her heart. To be left alone? She clutches Tarzan's arm. Don't go. Don't leave me. Please. Whiteskin. Tarzan holds the shaking girl close. If only he could speak, reassure her that he would soon return. You can't leave me here alone. Oh, I know you can't understand what I'm saying. But you must understand what I mean. Without a word, Tarzan lifts her into his arms. He places one arm about her waist and reaching above, pulls himself to a higher branch. Jane closes her eyes. She feels herself being carried up, up, up to the very loftiest branch of a jungle giant. Tarzan shakes her gently. She opens her eyes. On every side, the treetops hedge her in. For miles and miles, as far as the eye can see, nothing but waving spires of green dancing in the shimmering heat waves. Tarzan points out the smoke. Smoke! Fire! 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 Jane nods her head. This, then, is why he wants to go. Again, Tarzan points to the billowing gray column. Then he taps himself on the chest. White skin! Go! Fire! But you'll come back! You'll come back quickly! Tarzan looks at Jane. Can it be that she's saying what he cannot tell her? He stretches his hand out and then slowly brings it toward him and places it on Jane's head. Come back, quickly. White skin, go. Fire, come back, quick, quick, quick. Yes, yes, that's what I said. Oh, if I only knew that you understand what it means. I'm so afraid to be left alone. Jane covers her face with her hands and Tarzan, understanding the action, gently pulls her hands away and looks into her eyes, holding the trembling girl with one bronzed arm the ape man gently strokes her wavy hair. And then, satisfied that she understands, he holds her tightly and swings down into the denser foliage. Jane opens her eyes to find herself back on the platform in the trees. Tarzan lowers her gently. White skin, come. Back. Quick. 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 Yes. Quick. Tarzan looks down at her for a moment. He leans forward, places both hands on her shoulders, and then... Bending quickly, he lightly touches her hair with his lips and in a flash disappears into the trees. Meanwhile, the search party under Lieutenant Darno's guidance has wound its way deeper and deeper into the jungle up to the very edge of the clearing in which Tarzan killed Turkos. Monsieur Treton, I am afraid. I do not know what to say, but you think that further search is useless. We shall search as long as you desire, but... Night will soon be upon us, and I do not see any prospects of accomplishing anything after that. What you say is true, Dono. But how can we tell Porter? What's that? They must have found something. Is there a cylinder under that bush? Yes, yes, Porter. What is it? James Hagerson. Where? Under this bush. Hey, hey. Look, probably dragged off by the hyenas. A dead ape. The jungle scavengers have not demolished the remains of this ape altogether. And uh, wait a moment till I make sure. Oh, Porter. Professor Porter. Uh, Yes, Philander. Your advice. Look. Ah. Why, I I see. Uh, Yes, Philander. Yes, this ape. 
has been killed by a knife. Exactly. The ape's hide is cut and slashed severely, just below the heart. Then our jungle man evidently did for the ape. But Clayton, if he has, I feel sure that he'd have taken Jane back to the hut. Made by ape. Look here. See where this stream has made the ground soft and muddy. Footprints, human prints. Then it certainly was Tarzan of the Apes. If that fellow is Tarzan. Uh, but I understand uh, Tarzan can talk English, and Jane would naturally have asked him to take, take her back. But look, Monsieur Clayton, these footprints are almost in a straight line. Aborigine, in fact. But there are no Aborigines here. Uh, at least we have not seen any. I have been up and down this coast for ten years and have heard many rumors of a tribe of blacks somewhere in this vicinity. Oh, you alarm me, you alarm me. The, the Jane may have been rescued from the ape, only to fall into more brutal hands. Monsieur le professeur, I, I do not know what to say. Mais tonnerre, I shall be brutally frank. These blacks are cannibals. Oh, then, then uh, there is nothing we can do. Wait a minute. We've not heard the beating of any drums which might indicate... Uh, uh, yes, we did hear the drums. Uh, Monsieur Pelondary, the lamps, Lieutenant, and... Oh, assuredly, Monsieur, of course, in a matter of days, one will have to rest, eh? And night is the best of the big cats to call for food. Then we had better return to the hut. And await the landing of the supply. A week, and I will ask Mon Capai host for more supplies. Is it necessary? Bien necessaire, Monsieur. We are already overdue. Ten days we search for that shape yours, and our stores are depleted. Now, if we go off into your blue, I think Monsieur said, blue, I think Monsieur said, we will require more. I see. We then back to the hut it will have to be. <laughs> then back to the hut it will have to be. <laughs> Of course, that's right. That's yes. right. Uh, we can start. Uh, we, uh, we can't without on water, can we? Or blank out. Uh, even if one is oh, wrong, upset and distraught as I am, uh, one must be practical. I'm very sorry that things seem to be finding so slowly, Professor. Not mm. that, my dear Clayton. They have been born upon me very possibly. The quality of friends I have is wonderful to me, so quite. Wonderful. And here's the hut. He sees how the rising column of red and smoke comes as the rising column of red and smoke comes as in the headland. On his from hearing that the licking tongues of flame be spread to the clearing into his hut, placed like any mitten, shielding a face from the scorching heat, he just his brand after brand and scattered deep over the block, pushing them into the sea, branch green and leafy, and with long sweeping strokes, with his the last glowing embers down, rush the beach. On the Satisfied that there's no longer any danger to the hut, Tarzan carried it and swings himself easily yet sternly into the trees. Only if to the fire Tarzan has noticed that the is empty. And there the hut is something he wants. Sarah, the little black book with the books in it that he cannot read. But now he drops silently into the clearing at the hut, reaches the door in a few pieces, strides and pushes open the door. Quick. Tarzan goes to the cupboard where he's left the books. But there's the... There! He looks rapidly, not the hut. There, on a shelf, about tin box. Quickly, he opens it. The tin box. Quickly, he opens it. Dipping his fingers into the familiar box, he feels the smooth side of the dash bay. Deftly, he empties his arrows, slips the diary into the quiver, he scoops the arrows back into place again, and Sazam strides to the door. He sees the party approaching the hut. He opens the door to put us across the clearing. Look there! The ape man! Tarzan glances over his shoulder, leaps for a low-hanging, but over his plate and raises...